Hello there. The Sopranos, baby, episode six of season six. My name is Ellie Moses, a 24-year-old law and field student in Sydney, Australia, absolutely shooting his shot. This episode is titled Live Free or Die. Live Free or Die Hard, baby. Let's get into the reaction. Let's run this episode. Let's go. Yes, baby. This is Tony's utopia. This backyard. This is his place of zen. Do not bother him. <laughs> This is going to give him that Wolverine type healing, okay? He's going to be over this in a matter of days. Seconds. <laughs> There's going to be something else now, yeah, that bothers him, yeah? Some little other noise. Because the ending of last episode perfectly bleeds into the beginning of this episode. But you guys probably had to wait a week at the time. <laughs> I'm out. You coming? UV index is 10. Is that all you ever think about? Sex? All I ever think about? You haven't fucked me in over a year. Blood sugar. I told you. The weight loss. Good. Fine. Skin cancer. That's crazy. Vito got a side chick who has an F in a year because of his sexual urges. Then we talked about it at the wedding. And he probably done the Plus, same to his wife. You made the call to Italy. Our friend over there is going to fit him for a suit. She's sending over two of her best tailors. <laughs> so I should meet him at the airport? No. They're going to call you when they arrive. Now you hook him up with a third party. Huh? Get him some scissors. This is smart, though. The more I think about it. Glad you approve. Anybody taking a look? Not Yo, Chris got them speed hey, dealer hey, glasses. <laughs> About the other day. Fine. A couple stitches. My fucking temper. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's okay, really. Thank you. Thanks. Look, Tone. I don't remember slamming the refrigerator door. But Carlo told me, and my dad, I never should have raised my hands to you. I'm sorry. As long as you realize. <laughs> huh? So, um, I saw my cousin this week. It turns out he uh, ran into a friend of yours, the big guy, Vito. And? He was in a fag bar. Oh. Dancing with a guy. Here we go. Yeah, Vito didn't, I said Vito didn't pull the trigger. I just clocked that at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Didn't pull the trigger and the news had just spread. So, or just spread or it's just getting out now. So this is going to be very interesting. Time to lock in, Ellie. Dial in, dial in. We got to, come on, man. It's been a couple of days since I took a break on Sopranos because I was so ahead. So I got to lock the F in. Need a, I got I got a standard to uphold as the motherfucking boss of these fucking react. No, the motherfucking fucking boss of these reactions, okay? Fuck out. <laughs> Oh, he couldn't wait to tell the boys. <laughs> Look at a smile on his face. Who's your hat? <laughs> Fucking believe this. Vito spat a forest and ass muncher. Oh! What? What did you just say? I'm sorry, it's true. We ran into this kid. Vito was spotted in a fag bar in New York. By who? The kid's cousin. Allegedly. <laughs> bullshit. He's a married man. What a good man. Hey, it's, Back up a second. it's a good cover-up. Exactly. Kid's cousin, Sal Iacuzzo. From Yonkers, I know that. Sal was at this place in the city, supposedly on business. He saw Vito holding hands with a guy in nipple rings. You're leaving out the best part. He was wearing a motorcycle outfit, like the guy in the village people, with the leather hat and the vest. Chaps, too. I don't know. Fucking slander ass me. Nah, nah, nah. Nah, Tony. Hey, you. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> hey, you gotta remember Carmela's words to Tony in the hospital as well. You gotta watch out for that Vito. And, you know, even though Paulie tried to dismiss it real quick there, Tony's gotta think differently this season. 
Um, and there's going to be a lot of thinking from him this season. It could be bad. Sometimes you can overthink things. But Tony's thought process is a lot different this season. He's learned a lot of mistakes. And I think the Tony Blondetto situation as well, losing someone that close, family, especially with the past he had in terms of like the guilt he felt, um, it's going to make him really, really, I guess, calculate some of his decisions. They could be bad. They could be, you know, some of them could be good. But it's going to be crazy to see. I'll tell you one thing. It was me this kid was spreading rumors about? He'd have something up his own ass. And it wouldn't be no cock either. That's the point, though. This guy Sal, I know him. He's a friend of ours. I fucking called him. Long time ago. You knew Vito was a Rick Hill? Yes. When? I never said it, but I knew. <laughs> Get the fuck out, huh? Enough of this rush to judgment. Before we know this fucking Sal guy's got a heart on for Vito. Oh, you think this is funny, huh? There's a man's reputation at stake here. Married man with kids. Nah, that don't mean shit. Elton John was married. Yeah, Rock Hudson too. I think. So what do we have to do? <laughs> I think. Don't actually, see him take it in the ass. He'll be the one on the phone. Oh, on the phone he could dismiss it pretty easily because if you have him in person, at least you can suss out his body language. You know, he called me the other night, three o'clock in the morning after the wedding. And yeah, honestly, it was weird. He wanted to know what was going on. He was fucking fishing. See if we heard. Straight to voicemail. Don't, I mean, he represents us. I'm not gonna condemn the man up the water, some fucking douchebag from Yonkers. I could care less, basically. Yeah? Maybe you're a flambe. Fucking nauseating. It's up to me, I drag Vito behind my fucking car right now. Oh, will you take it easy over there, fucking Judge Roy Bean? One of my bar girls knows his gumad. We'll check with her. She's seen him and knows where he is. Eh? Lauren. You know what I find this episode? It's very interesting. The callbacks I'm getting, and I'm sorry to keep pausing straight away, but the callbacks I'm getting to this episode is the episode in season was it three or four, um, the Christmas episode and Pussy being in the Santa costume. And they started thinking about all the times that Pussy, you know, could have been wired up. And obviously they might've not been right. They might've been just extra paranoid. And they're thinking, this was the time he was wired up. This was the time we wired up. And now it's got me thinking like the way everyone is thinking here, yeah, Chris, oh, I knew it long ago. Um, you know, Silvio tracking back the time to when he called him at 3 p.m. or uh, 3 a.m. in the morning um, and the three o'clock thing with Chris and, uh, from where to eternity um uh, it's just got me thinking like that and the boys um they start you know thinking about the time this happened thinking about the time this happened to read all the signs even though it's not exactly concrete proof they just like you know try to understand when someone's acting kind of strange he didn't want to do this he wanted to do that think about it, though, got me thinking about that episode so weight loss there we go aids nobody's got aids i don't want to hear that word here again magic johnson man damn they're these poor, hardworking people. Then you're not eating? Uh, coffee's good. I mean it. The government is just completely fucking this family over. When did it start you could use that kind of language in this house with immunity? <laughs> I told my mom about these people that came into the office yesterday. Let me guess. Was it a crack whore trying to get her kids back for the welfare money? Or? Actually, it was a family from Afghanistan who fled the Taliban and sweated out visa lotteries in a refugee camp and hold down three jobs. <laughs> You think it's funny? Why are we playing the violin, yeah, Tony? Snatched their son off the street like we're some third world dictatorship. It's pretty scary. There must have been some reason, Meadow. Like he's a terrorist, maybe. 9-11, 9-11. Bush is using it as an excuse to erode our constitutional protections, and you're falling for it. I voted for him. Yo. Right. Well, you don't relate to black people clinging to logs. Yo, the commentary on this season would have been crazy at the time. Uh, you want to chill like, out about some of this. Like crazy. Hey. That's not how you do concentration kills. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Those uh, two Arabs with the credit cards, uh, Bazul or whatever his name is. Yeah? You think there's a chance they could be, uh, I don't know, Al-Qaeda's? Something like that? Mm. But I did ask for a Mac 10 you know, at one point, it did cross my mind. And? I don't think so. They're gun nuts, but the smaller guy, Ahmed, when those Danish cartoons got published, he was very upset, but at the protesters. 
He said he hated the cartoons, but that the rioting shit would just bring bad attention to all Muslims. Yeah, but you gotta be yeah, careful. Muhammad, his brother's a government interrogator in uh, Lebanon. Lebanon! Pick up Lebanon! Let's go! Muhammad <laughs> and his girlfriend have a dog. Uh, Springer Spaniel. I'm gonna get a coffee. See, it's, you know, it, sometimes it can be those closet ones. Look at Vito. These guys, you never know. You never know. It's the ones you least expect. But then again, you need the concrete proof. Interesting how the situation with the Arabs ties into, as well, the mob and mafia life. Can be the ones you least expect that are wired up. Sure. I love how you can hear the thunder yeah, rumbling in the problem. background. The storm is coming, baby. Vito knows what's up. I'll turn it to a full GTA chase sequence here. There's something about Sopranos in the rain that just hits different. Just hits different. Remember the ending of season one, all in the restaurant? Damn, the callbacks this episode are crazy. I'm on fire! <laughs> hey. I hear Fat Vito's been riding up the Hershey Highway. Where'd you get that? Come on. Somebody started a joke. I won't mention any names. There's no truth to it. Oh. We'll see about that. It's a fucking captain you're talking about. Yeah. That's like the joke with Ginny Sack. <laughs> People went to see him. He was down the shore with his boom on. So it's bullshit, then. Yeah. As soon as he saw me, took off like a bat on a hill. <laughs> you didn't hear it from me. <laughs> be a midlife thing. Sucking a cock. Go to Finn, man. Well, hey, Rachel at the hospital with her mom. Kids asleep? They went to sleep about an hour ago. That's that emergency money. Damn, Vito was handsome in the day. Look at that haircut. Like I had it. Poor Vito. In reality, it should be who gives a crap about his sexuality. But he's in this game. And it's the wrong game. To have the wrong rumors spread like that. Why do I sense a car accident coming? Holy moly. You just run over a d oh a tree, okay. Fuck He threw the cell phone away as well. Great. <laughs> Yo little red riding hood. Yo, anybody getting Jurassic Park vibes here with Ned? <laughs> and the, the the Dilophosaurus. Hi, how you doing? I need a room for the night. I don't have anybody down for a reservation. The sign said vacancy. Oh, we have rooms. We usually don't get walk-ins. Come in. Spending awfully a lot of time on Vito this episode. Remember what happened with the Gene episode? A lot of time on Gene. Glad to have you. Slow around here till the leaf peepers show up. Let me show you where we serve breakfast. I just want to go to my room. No problem. It's 140, breakfast included, MasterCard or Visa. I'll pay cash. Well, 
We accept that too. <laughs> she can take care of it in the morning. This is for you. Have a good night. Is this the episode where I they're gonna the make us up the stairs first door to the right? Feel sorry for Vito. Because that's the benefit of having the 20 plus episode final season, right? We get to spend more time with the other characters involved within the Mafia game. And I like that about this season as well. I like that it's fleshing out um, a bit more of the other characters and we're spending time with the other characters and seeing them or getting the POV of them in a situation like this. Um, and it's very interesting to see and I really love that about it. You know, we've spent six seasons um or over five seasons now with tony soprano and we've had the beautiful fantastic dream episodes at the beginning of this season but i'm all for this season delving deeper or getting the perspective of characters on the run or other characters you know sort of trying to get out the game and having reasons to get out the game it's it's, it's great stuff Hey, remember Carmela slept with a piece under her pillow? Now Vito's doing the same. I want to see this house get finished this season. <laughs> Too bad she don't have the clearance at the moment. You left it there to rot. Uh, I don't believe this. With my husband on his deathbed. Oh, Sarah Bernhard. You went over there and you picked through the place like a vulture. You said you'd straighten out the permits with the building department, and you never did. That is beside the point. Carmela, what happened to my bun pan? It was your fault the permits were denied in the first place. Oh, you're a broken record, for God's sake. That's where you are. I did not. Wait. No, let her go. I've had a lifetime of her bullshit. Listen, we, I did not expect Carmela to be beefing with her dad this episode, or this season as well. Like, I did not expect that. But at the same time, I did not expect Drake to be Meatball. beefing with Future, Metro Boomin, and the whole rap game at the moment with Kendrick Lamar and stuff. So you never know with this show too. It's good. First time here, try the Johnny Cakes. What's that? Pancake made with white cornmeal. New England specialty. <laughs> Where are you from? Scottsdale. Well, they're delicious. A little butter, local syrup. Okay. And give me some of them Jimmy Deans. Uh, our sausages are made in-house. Hey, boys. How'd you guys make out the storm? Uh, we lost our lights in the middle of a cold case. <laughs> we thought we were going to have to talk to each other or read a book. The usual guys. Are we boring? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You know what I find ironic? It's Vito is in now the Jackie Jr. situation where you're on the run, you're in hiding, you don't want to come in contact with the wrong person. And it, it, life comes at you full circle. It's the circle of life. Melfi talked about in the therapy session. It's just find it ironic that, you know, he killed an individual who was supposedly on the run in cold blood, literally came up to him in dead silence mode, creeped up on him, Bang, popped him in the head, ended up in the pool of his own blood, as Meadow would say, that he was, she was afraid of that. And now he's in a similar situation. He, I wonder if he's feeling sorry for Jackie Jr. in this situation. Uh, maybe a little bit of like, okay, oh crap, this is what it feels like. I'm in a situation like that. I'm on the run. I don't want to come into contact with one individual. And at the same time, I'm getting flashbacks to the college episode as well, with Tony coming across that individual who was formerly in the game and being out of it for a while. And, you know, he'd escaped it, thought of it, he escaped it, and just somehow, by some sheer luck, luck, bad luck, came across Tony Soprano. Here's your Johnny Cakes. I gotta warn you, they're addictive. <laughs> they look good. Is there some sexual tension here that I'm missing? Or no, he's just sussing out and surveying the room. You want more coffee? No, I'm coffee now. You don't say hello to your uncle? Hey, Uncle Phil. Vito. <laughs> Vito. <laughs> well, he ain't gonna show. I'll just leave him these. He said he'd be back from Vegas today. I don't know. And, uh... In the romance department. Excuse me? 
What's this all about? <laughs> it's awkward. Hey, Sylvia is really straight okay, to the point. Come so on, Sylvia. I really don't want to talk about this. Vito's a good father and a loving husband. But his mind is elsewhere. He takes these unexplained powders. He's got a Gumar. I know all about it. That's sad. That's it's sad again. Forget about it. You hear from him? Tell him I brought him some blood, sweat, and tears tickets. Backstage passes too. <laughs> so we have got all the contacts. Probably went to Hesh for those. I'm telling you, my business, I'm around a lot of women. That one ain't getting late. Yeah, yeah uh, he knew straight away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Silvio is the perfect guy to suss out that stunt, that kind of stuff. Holy moly! Hello, Vito. You got him. Who? Hope Vito on a phone, asshole. Fuck you, motherfucker. <laughs> what are you sucking his dick? What am I? Better I kick your ass, you fucking faggot. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Telephone, tough guy. Put Vito on a phone. <laughs> Look, there ain't no veto, man. I found the phone on the side of the road. <laughs> what? Hang on a second. <laughs> Where'd you find the phone? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Why is Tony always beefing with black guys, man? Not even face to face this one. Bob at the marina with Tony Dox's boat says he'll donate. Can he get his guy to track the cell phone like he did with Tony B? A silent auction again? Why not get live auction here? I got the sea bream. Beautiful. What you need dusted ravioli? Huh? I hate to be a pain, but I gotta get back. Can we just let him cook? Great. Go for it. Yo, NG! Louie. Jesus Christ, he's always interrupting. People enjoy the silent auction. I thought our goal was to raise money. I say we get him lick it up. Let him tear each other's throats out. <laughs> Angie doing well for herself. She's so expressive Just now. Just an idea. Anyhow, put me down for two thousand dollars worth of body work and or paint. Two thousand dollars. Flexing. Oh, did you hear about Vito and Marie? Separate. Oh, sorry. I got now the rumors of the wives, man. The gossip is everlasting. Hello? They were just at the wedding. It's they a never-ending story. Is that a beautiful fish or what? Oh, for huh? God's sake! All right. Can I just get some prosciutto melon to go? I'm sorry, guys. I gotta get back. No, the quarter panel from the La Saber, I said. <laughs> you know what? Big up, Angie Bump and Sarah. Can I let the girl talk her shit? Can we? Can we agree? I, I said, you know, that's a jealous woman right there. That's an envious woman. That's a look. Come on, you guys agree with me? Let Let me talk my shit, okay? Let Let, let me talk my shit. Let Angie Bump and Sarah talk her shit. I think Carmel is a bit jealous that her husband went away and she's been able to hold down the freaking fort when Carmela's own husband went away or lived away and she couldn't and she struggled and relied on, you know, the allowances, um, tried to play the divorce card and get, you know, half his, whatever, you get what I mean? Angie Bomb and Sarah making a living. I know she probably got the auto shop um, through Puss because he ran it, but still... She was down and out when Tony visited her for the thing with uh, Phil, Phil Leotardo with his car. But now she manned up. And, and yeah, she ain't taking shit from no uh, big up Angie Bomber Sarah. You didn't know he was gay. Actually, I had him pegged the whole time. But... <laughs> oh, pause. Pause. Close friend. Not only that, he's one of my most valuable guys. He's ambitious. The he's top earner. Best. I was in the hospital. He helped Carmelo tremendously when we were strapped. You've implied you have millions of dollars. Yeah, but you can't show it. The stay was actually that costly? Well, no, but... Uh, huh? You might have millions of dollars, but it's how much you can show is in this life. Issue? You tell me, what is the issue? He's a fag. And? <laughs> <laughs> Oi, that that gotta be a clip, man. I'm surprised I haven't seen that clip on Twitter. Like, I, I, out of all my days on Twitter, 
I, I'm surprised I haven't seen that clip. Like, now what am I supposed to do? <laughs> I know it. They're born that way, right? It's not their fault. But frankly, I think they go about in pity for themselves. I don't think they see it as a fault. In your circle, I'm sure you got all kinds of uh, gays and uh, trans whatevers of all stripes, but not where I come from. You personally, <laughs> how do you feel about homosexuality? I find it disgusting. Men kissing men, holding hands in the street. Every fucking TV show now, they rub your nose in it. I know that the lesbian thing with the uh, Jennifer Beals. It's not bad. <laughs> I knew when it came to the woman, he was going to say it wasn't bad. <laughs> he wasn't that bad. I, know. I don't give too much of a shit <laughs> what people do behind closed doors with the consenting adults. But don't, don't forget, I'm a strict Catholic. And now we're playing the Catholic card, really? I now we're playing it? Sanatorium. <laughs> Says if we let this stuff go too far, pretty soon we'll be fucking dogs. <laughs> Yo, this guy got to be one of the greatest ambivalent. or the greatest protagonists in film TV history. Like, TV yeah, history. <laughs> Look, the guys that work for me are asking for head. Pause! His head. <laughs> Pause! You know, him and me were in the construction business. Now some of these union old timers, the contractors, they're not going to want to be seen with him. And I'm talking huge deals, major fucking dollars. A lot of your circle must have done jail time. They can't be strangers to male-male sexual contact. Are you going to pay us for that? <laughs> well, that's nice. What are you going to do? There's no women there. You're there five, ten years. Just for the record, my uh, incarceration was very short term, so I never had any need for any anal... <laughs> <laughs> Such a... So this fella who's been outed, what's he saying? Uh, you think I'm lying, don't you? About when I was in jail. I've given you no indication I think you're lying. What the fuck? I suppose something inside me says, God bless, I salute. Who gives a shit? Honestly, yes. Who gives a shit? When I had a second chance, well, why shouldn't he? Part of your new outlook? Maybe. Microsoft Outlook, baby, yes. I salute it then. <laughs> Don't fucking order, I'll tell you that. <laughs> she calling the shots. You can talk about every day being a gift and uh, stopping to smell the roses. But regular life's got a way of picking away at it. Your house, the shit you own, it drags you down. Your kids, what they want. One bad idea after another. I was trying to work a cell phone menu. It's enough to make you scream. <laughs> There's some cold past. No, I ate already. Come here. No, uh, I'm still not ready for that. <laughs> Last time I thought I tore something from uh, tension in my muscles. <laughs> No, I got something for that scar. Imagine lying next to a guy 15 years and all the time he's been playing for the pink team. Here we go. You? Tell me, swore me to see Christmas. Here we go. I'm not going to burn my sources. Anyway, it's all over the place. Those children. Imagine when they find out their father's a fanook. God, she's such a bright girl, Marie Spadafore. You think she and Vito had some arrangement? I just hope she gets herself tested. God. Still Vito? I mean, he'd be like the last one you'd suspect. It's always those ones. <laughs> what? Wow, such a young lady. Yes, she's working two jobs. Days she is interning again, the Luxstein Abruzzo and Abruzzo. What about Vito? Nothing. Him and Maria having some problems, that's all. Excuse me? Uh uh, I'm not going first. Do you know something? <laughs> oh, did Finn tell her? Behind the scenes? Okay. He is possibly... Or, or is Meadow playing him? Gay. Ben saw him giving some guy a blowjob. Oh, okay. <laughs> what? 
When Dad got him that job in construction, Finn showed up early one morning and he saw Vito in a car going down in some security guard. Oh, my God! He saw this? He had Finn all freaked out. He still does. Why didn't you say something? Because Vito warned Finn not to. Sydney, you're not enough part of the French. <laughs> <laughs> the way he was. what Meadow just told us. Mom! The cat's out of the bag, Meadow. The gossip, the gossip. <laughs> Tony just woke up. Oh, it's Dr. Yankum. Oh no. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> buckle up, buckle up. <laughs> How you doing, kid? Hey, Tom. Yo, all I'm saying is row in that villa tracksuit. Unfortunately, Finn here's got some bad news, so uh, listen up. Sit down. Out of all people, Finn. Right. Tell him what you saw. This is so intimidating for him, man. It's all right, dude. <laughs> no, I wanted to see him tell them in their reaction. Come on. White Pine Mountain. Is that the Pine Barrens? Is that an Easter egg? Morning. I love the way Vito walks. He's not gonna know I told you? You ain't gonna have no problem from Vito. Believe me. It's crazy. Gonna do? It'll be okay. Get him to pay for some therapy. Well, look, why don't you... Uh... Well, front, get yourself a sandwich, any kind you like, huh? Soda. And, uh, when we're done here, somebody will take you back. All right. I, just want, I love that cutaway shot right there. It's like, yeah, the like long shot right there of the entire room and Tony walking Wait. away. I just want to say like, Tony obviously um, with Melfi, he's bound by obviously the client attorney or like the the patient client relation, uh, the client the patient client privilege, and in that realm, he has room to echo his thoughts without it having to go out of that room or without it having being spread. Now with Carmela, even with his wife Carmela, like I'm saying. It has the potential to go to Ro. It has the potential to go to anyone. Now Tony, with after his situation and this new outlook on life who gives a shit like he's willing to give Vito a second chance but the thing is he doesn't want these individuals to hear his thoughts here he has to keep his thoughts here to himself I guess and it might be a tough decision but it's probably one he's willing to let go um and he can't echo those type of who gives a shit thoughts to these guys here because one he risks um you know um he risks losing his masculinity and I guess um, in, in revealing his softness as Capo as well. You saw Phil Leotardo totally spin on Johnny Sack at the wedding when he was crying. And I feel like Phil Leotardo has his own securities and he had to up, you know, uphold that tough guy persona. So yeah, Tony has to ball up some of his thoughts this season, I feel like, with his new outlook. And I feel like include his thoughts when he can. Uh, because it doesn't go down well with some of these guys. You're gonna have no problem from Vito. Believe me. What are you gonna do? It'll be okay. Get him to pay for some therapy. Yeah, therapy. Well, Early well, retirement. Well, See, a situation like this, Vito hasn't done anything technically wrong. It's just against the rule book and their culture. It's the same with Tony seeing a therapist. Um... Um, um, Uncle June eating a girl out, stuff like that. I feel like I've been stabbed in the heart. Well, we can't have him here in our social club no more. I mean, that much I do know. The social club? He's got to go. I want to think about it. Yeah, I, I don't know. What the fuck? What is there to think about? He's a top Shut earner. Up. Fuck that, I'll say it again. What the fuck is there to think about? <laughs> you going to take care of his kids? Hi, after he's gone? It's true. They didn't do nothing. Poor little guys. Now sit down. <laughs> but I think level-headed here. He's a top earner as well. New York, he's close with Phil. 
I'm sorry if I yelled, T. It's just, how much more betrayal can I take? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it about yourself, man? You know a fag. Big construction tycoon. Tone. When he was always talking about Greece and the Union, who knew that's what he meant? <laughs> This stays in these four walls. Ah. Uh, Understood? How about the women's walls, man? That's out in the stratosphere. With the way the woman talking. Oh, my God. That shit spread to LV246, if you know what I mean. I can't believe it myself. That's why I'm here, honey. There's been confirmation through the grapevine. Vito was seen in a car with a man. That grapevine, man. The graphic beyond that. The idea of it repulses me so much. Oh, the confirmation. Who? Oh. The witness has no reason to lie. No. We can't be in denial no more, much as we love him. Where do you think he might have gone, honey? So we can get him back here. Get him to do something about it. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Excuse me. Angie here? In the office. She away on business. <laughs> you want, sweetheart? Airbags, chrome rims. Oh, oh, hi. Calm, hi. I'm sorry, am I interrupting something? I'm here for the uh, free bodywork certificates for the auction. Oh, that's right. But if you're busy, this will just take another sec. Okay, sure. Oh man, keeping calm, waiting in the waiting room. <laughs> Doing something behind closed doors. Well, you know, Angie's put money on the street. <laughs> oh, shit. You know? Angie told me. She didn't tell me. Ah, <laughs> oh, because of Tony. Ah, oh, maybe he didn't want you to know something like that. Me and my Bro. big mouth. Yo, the women have big mouths, man. Well, I told you. To do that, huh? The Guardians of the Galaxy probably know Vito's yeah, sexuality by now. Our grandmothers did it. Those were harder times, but. I salute, right? She's one of us. Now it's like she's one of them. Ooh. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> Have a drink. Congratulations. That's a loo, that's a loo, that's a loo. I don't disagree. I'm poorly, especially. Now that he's accepted it, hey, he's the most alpha Vito scalp. Yeah, you should hear him talk. He's going fucking mau mau on the subject. <laughs> well, it's not their fucking decision who they work with. Let me tell you something. Fucking Vito, through sheer hard work, turned himself into my best earner. I don't even know if I'd have the new boat without him. That was a lot he's to a Vito. Kind of guy. Balls. That's true, but. So I'm going to burn that kind of dedication? It's hard to believe I couldn't get something more out of him if he would have come back. Stocks, offshore shit. I don't know. These other guys feel an effort should be made to find him and put him down for the honor of the family. Oh, please, huh? You know, certain people, they love the high drama, like fucking high school girls. And others I can name, they, they just can't wait to whack somebody, anybody. <laughs> Some people feel it's against our principles. You got a point, but again, it's the principle thing. A sin. Bending the rules. Come. Let's be honest with ourselves here. We all know Vito's not the first. He'll be trying to read that car magazine all episode. <laughs> what? <laughs> I knew it. It's 2006. There's pillow biters in the special forces. Let me just ask you, Tom. Sake of argument. Let's say he shows up. You gonna kiss this guy on both cheeks? Take for me, okay? You know perfectly well, guys like him never kick up their full percent to you. 
You look the other way. Price of doing business. Now you cut Vito slack, now that he's out of the closet, just the excuse people need to go off the reservation. Start withholding serious money. That is true. Like, look at the business game side of things as well. You gotta look at that angle. Let me read in page for you. Sylvia does have a point. I, I love that scene right there. The whole sequence um, in, in, in getting Carlo in as well. Like, it was a long extended take with him entering the room and them talking about him getting the construction side of things as well. It was like a beautiful medium long shot of the room and it held that. Then towards the end, the camera slowly pulled into Tony's face to reveal like an extreme close-up shot or a close-up shot of his head. I'm like, okay, is this going to be an awkward cutaway now where they're going to cut to another scene of him and um, <clears throat> or just like someone else, a character in the show? But no, the camera held there. And it racked focus on Tony's face on the right hand side of the screen. And then Silvio was out of focus, obviously, and he never it never racked in focus into him. And I'm just like, okay, what's what's going on here? And it's like Tony finally spoke and he's like, what? Like he knew something was up. He knew, it's like he had that he had those two eyes behind the back of his head and he knew that Silvio wanted to speak out. And I, I love that sort of like that connection between them. They have that sort of like they're, they're using the, the, the Star Wars uh, four spy, uh, 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 Skype call right there with Kylo Ren and Ray. <laughs> like literally like he knew what was going on. He's like, speak, come on, speak your mind. You know what was going on. And I love the facial expressions right there from Tony. And like, you know, he said a lot with his face, even though he didn't say very much in that scene right there. Having fun with all this paper? I can't believe this is just one case. Rafaela Martino, I'm the lead attorney on this mess. Oh, Meadow Soprano. I'm Michael Kardish, I work with Ray. Hi. The Soprano came highly recommended. Columbia Dean's List, volunteer at the South Bronx Law Center. Well, this is really interesting too. Of course, it's different than the kind of thing we see at the Law Center. Clients there are so trampled and abused. Welcome to white collar fraud. I need emails from box 44 and 45, July and August. Pull them and leave them with my assistant. There's going to be a lot different to the center. There's going to be a lot. Oh, we had to whisper that? We had to whisper that? All right, you're on site too. You're about to get whacked. You're on site. you got to be careful. Tony. It's crazy how much, how much weight that name has within sort of even New York, New Jersey area. No matter what. So Meadow should have just taken off and gone to another state probably where... This, you know, or the name doesn't have such weight or value. Um, it could potentially derail her career or people are going to think like ill of her or, you know, you hear the wrong gossip, you hear the wrong words. She gets a promotion very early on, maybe out of fee or something along the lines of that. People talk, you know, it's just the gossip thing. This whole episode has had gossip galore. So. Hold my lats back up. <laughs> Did you any chance to talk to the building inspector about my house? Shit, I forgot. He, she losing patience with that. She losing patience with that. She's gonna stop giving Tony a pass with the recovery stages. The sorting's tedious, but some of the cases. This guy was pretty clever, really. He set up all these phony investment firms and then just siphoned the money out. Eighty million dollars. Whoa. Is this a cinema room? Bail. Then you look at my father's friend. Federal marshal's dragging him out of his own daughter's wedding. He hasn't even been tried yet. You're innocent in this country until proven guilty. Yo, imagine Meadow picks up the Johnny Sack case. For murder. <laughs> I couldn't let him stay 15 more minutes. You better put your pants on. Let's talk about something else. No, let's talk about it. So we can stop with the macaroni cracks. Weird, since you're part Italian yourself. Please, my dad is so deracinated. Yeah, the way he prefers it. All those hysterical jokes about Italian cheeses and smelly feet. Damn, Meadow sounds so mature now. Why like, even her no, voice. you're slamming my family. I don't know. Where, where, where did he slam your family? This is good shit. Amazing. We weren't there for the Grand Inquisition about Vito. I knew it. I'm picking a fight. I was in the back of a butcher shop with your... Uncle Polly ratting out a guy I don't really even know. I mean, what do you think's gonna happen to Vito for being gay? And don't give me any of that poverty of the mezzo giorno bullshit. We're in fucking Caldwell, New Jersey, and you're on your high horse about justice? They are gonna meet it out themselves. They're gonna carry out their own justice. This is untenable. Untenable? 
She's speaking like Lil' Carmine now. I've never heard that word in a relationship. Untenable. Like, the way she said, really? <laughs> Live free or die, New Hampshire. <laughs> well, you've got a good eye. It's the most expensive piece in the store. You're a natural. Listen, I, I feel sorry. I kind of feel sorry for the inevitable, like, path Vito is going down here. And I feel like Tony is, like, it's just like, I, I think there's going to be a hit put out on him. And I think the only reason Tony's going to put the hit out on him is because Tony's going to be pressured to put the hit out on him because of, you know, the mafia, the macho man culture of it. Um, now, listen, the guy hasn't done any harm to anyone in terms of, like, being in the mafia game. Um, in terms of, obviously, yeah, he was a bit close to um, Phil Leotardo, but it's the cousin of his wife. Um, in terms of like being in the game, he's a top earner for Tony. He's done great things. He's provided, or uh, has the potential to provide even more opportunities, um, for Tony. So he's losing a massive asset. He's just, just as much as, um, Ralphie was a massive asset in terms of like him being a top owner. I think Vito is probably better and he's probably going to go out for like m way, way much worse reasons than Ralphie. And I feel like Tony, um, voiced it right and i agree with tony for instance it was like who gives a crap what happens beyond the closed doors like just let the man live out his life he wants to choose that part it is what it is obviously there might be a little bit damaged done to the uh, marriage and stuff like that but that's for him to handle that's for Vito to handle um so i feel like him yeah him going into back into new jersey if he does i doubt he will um he's a walking target like he, he, he he's dead like he's done like, even if Tony doesn't even take out an order, if he walks into Paulie or someone like Phil, it's done. It's done for. Like, a pish, Done. And even Bobby was a bit lenient. Even Patsy didn't speak out as much this episode. Um, but it's interesting. Like, you got to uphold sort of, like, the values and, and of the Macho Man Mafia, the culture and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I kind of feel bad for him in that sense because he hasn't, like insulted a capo he hasn't done what tony blendetto did and take out um a, a capo's brother like he hasn't done any he hasn't cracked a joke against anyone the man is just doing what he does behind closed doors it just so happened he got caught by finn and the other guys at the club like i feel kind of bad for him like it's probably gonna be an unjustified killing here in terms of like being in the game Interesting episode. Interesting episode, ladies and gentlemen. I feel like this is where the Vito saga is really going to start to kick off. And we're seeing, you know, more depth into Vito outside the mafia lifestyle. And I feel like his other side is coming out. Just like Tony has two sides to his life, Vito does as well. Like everyone does. Um, and we're just seeing a bit more of the sensitive side to Vito, I think. Um, listen, he's done terrible things, don't get me wrong, everyone in this show is a terrible person, like, in terms of, like, what they do, but I feel like, in terms of, like, what's to come, and I feel like the inevitable death of Vito, if he does get caught, because you never run away from this game, and I think the college episode, I'm sorry to take it back to that, but I think the college episode proved that, and set the tone, um, and, you know, set a precedent for, you're never really out of this game, once you're in it, because, look, my sheer, like, bad luck, the guy got caught by Tony, and he got caught lacking, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, no matter where Vito goes, I feel like he's going to be on the hunt forever. Unless he goes out the country, some extradition type stuff. Um, but even then, you're still at risk. Like, I don't know. You're still at risk. Um, and I feel like no one will ever let that grudge go. Like, even if you're out of country. Like, I feel like if somehow by, like some miraculous work that you're spotted in another country by one of these guys who knows about you you're done you're done like it's just it's just the way it is and yeah i find it very interesting this episode is actually you know such a great springboard off of um um season uh sorry episode five and i find 
a, a, a few similarities between Vito and Tony this episode in terms of like how they're at peace with nature and how they, you know, sit like you so, sort of like in natural settings. You had Vito with the waterfall um, and sort of like the nature park. And Tony obviously his backyard at the last at the start of last episode, um, uh, at the end of last episode and at the beginning of this episode, you know, they find that peace in those, you know, nature settings in, with the greens and stuff like that. And Tony did it as well when he was smoking the cigar at his uncle's house with Tony Blundetto and um, Christopher. But when he had that moment of peace by himself in those open acreages and things like that. So I found a few similarities between Tony and Vito. And I think, I don't know if those visual parallels are meant to, or like in those settings as well, are meant to connect Tony and Vito in terms of like their outlook on life and stuff like that. Or like Tony, you know, having a bit of sympathy um, for Vito and understanding of his situation. Very interesting. So um, I can't wait to see the season unfold, ladies and gentlemen. We're six episodes deep. Sensational. This is why, in my opinion, greatest show of all time. Tony Soprano's greatest character, um, TV character of all time. I love it. I love it. Take care, guys. Hope you enjoyed the reaction. God bless. Peace.